I'm glad you're with us coming out on a snowy morning. Church has a definite tilt to it today. <laughs> so uh, our schedule this week, uh, today there will be no youth group. Beverly called, she's got some kind of, some kind of bug, didn't sound good at all, so she will not be here this morning and there'll be no youth group tonight. Tuesday we have jail ministry and laundry love, right? Yeah, there you go. This Tuesday, so check with Patty on that. Um, Wednesday Bible study at 6.30, available on Zoom if you can't get here. I would ask, and the council has talked about this, um, that you see if you would be interesting, interested in volunteering for a visitation committee. Uh, one of the things that's hard for me to do is to get around and see all the people I need to see. So that is one thing that the congregation can pick up and help with. So if, if that's you, let it be known to Larry or myself or um, someone else on the council that you'd be interested in doing that. Uh, we, we, our list of people in the hospital and shut-ins is growing. So uh, I would ask you to consider if you want to take part in that. Speaking of hospitalizations, I got a text from Debbie Harker this morning. She's in the hospital. I don't want to go into too much detail other than to say it doesn't, it's not life threatening and it doesn't sound all that serious, but anytime you go in the hospital, it's serious. So we'll continue to pray for Debbie. Uh, Tony Higgins is back out of the hospital now. So he is home, but in the hospice, is that correct? So we need to continue to pray for him. For Steve Adkins, who had a procedure done. Uh, also for Harold Durbin. For Patricia and Beverly and Wayne and Eric and Josh and Bruno and myself and all with cancer. For my friend Robert and for Darlene's Aunt Dixie. Uh, birthdays this week, Lynn Coon. Lisa Loveless has a birthday this week. And Ali Coon. Have I missed anything? Do we need to add anything? All right. If not, let us go ahead and uh, lift up our brothers and sisters in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you at this place in this time. Bless our worship this morning that it may, may be a pleasing aroma to you. We lift up those who need you this day in mind, body, and spirit, continuing to pray for Linda Long, for Tony, for Harold, for Debbie, who is in the hospital, and for Steve, for Robert, and for Dixie. We also lift up Patricia, and Beverly, and Wayne, and Eric, Josh, Bruno, and myself, and all with cancer, that you may bring remission, healing, and hope. We thank you for another year of life for Lynn, and Lisa, and Allie. Bless them all as their years increase, and draw them ever closer to you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I would invite you to spend a few minutes of your own in silent prayer and meditation as we prepare to come into the presence of the living God. Amen. <clears throat> this time I would ask those who are able to stand to please do so for our call to worship and remain standing for our opening hymn and the prayer that follows. Let us pray. 
How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns for you. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. We join with them this day and ask you to bless us as we come again to you in worship and praise. Amen. And our opening hymn is on page 689. finish up the prayer we've been going through the last few weeks I bind myself today next week we will resume with the Apostles Creed our prayer is found on page one the last paragraph let us pray 
I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature hath creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the God of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, as I said, Beverly's out of commission today. We certainly pray for her return to health. But that means you get me. I don't know if that's good news or bad news. No, that's okay. I'm not going to single them out. I'm going to fast forward this a little bit because I want to show you a picture. And you guys tell me what you think of it. Do you know what that is? What? A genie. What does a genie do? Grant's wishes. Have you heard this story before then? With the lamp? Oh, yeah. So what happens? You find one of these lamps and do what? You rub it. Okay. And then you get three wishes. Oh, there are rules? Okay. Uh, so out pops this magic genie who's been trapped in the bottle. And he comes out and he says, I'm going to give you some wishes. <laughs> Have you ever thought that would be like if you got to do that? To get a wish? What would you wish for? You have no idea. Oh, come on. A genie comes to you and says, I'll give you whatever you want. A pen and paper, so you could write stuff down. And you did. Oh, okay. Wish list. 
<laughs> you, guys, you guys would wish for a longer school day, right? What should you wish for? What should we wish for if we had one, if we had one wish? I'm, I'm just curious. To be healthy? That's a good wish. Get, hold on to that thought, because we'll come back to that. What else? Peace. Those are good things to wish for, too. Very good. Well, coming up in the sermon, we're going to talk more about this. And we're going to look at somebody who actually got a wish from the Bible. Not like a genie wish. But it's interesting what he asked for. And what God wants us to ask for. What do you think God would want you to wish for? What do you think God, if God gave you a wish and said, I'll give you anything you want, what do you think he would want you to wish for? Hold on to that thought, because we're going to come back to that as well. But I want you to understand, this is kind of what we're thinking about this morning. This idea of prayer and wishes and how it all fits together. And what God would want us to wish for if we could. So uh, hold on to that thought and we will come back to it, all right? I'm going the wrong way. Okay. Thank you. What's that? What's that? Oh, you've turned my house into a den of thieves. <laughs> <laughs> this can't wait till afterwards. Here, here, get. I'll, I'll, you know what? As we're going out, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of this. <laughs> Don't make me overturn the tables. Um, success story this week. Uh, I got a text yesterday from a guy we had been working with at the Shelby County Jail who is now in Noble County, working off some time there. And he said, it's really bad here. They don't even let pastors come in. They don't want you to have a Bible. It's really kind of rough. So he's been asking, we're texting back and forth, and he's been talking about needing somebody to talk to and guidance, and this is where it all pays off. I, uh, that here we can show someone God's love. And he associates that with us and it will help him as he goes forth. And wherever he goes, he knows that we'll be there for him. And he said when he gets out, he wants to come and visit. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support for that ministry and all our ministries. Uh, laundry love. Do you still need more volunteers? We're good. We're good for this week. But think, be thinking about getting involved in one of our ministries. Because that's the thing that's going to outlive all of us. We want those to keep going even when we can't be here. And I think that really needs to be a part of our DNA and who we are. So blessings to you if you're volunteering for a ministry. And thank you. And let's just keep up the good work. Yeah. Guys are welcome too. Guys are welcome too at Laundry Love. It's not just for women anymore. All right, our service continues with our gathering prayer. Let us pray. Hear our prayer, Lord God Almighty, and listen, God of Jacob. Look upon us, God. Look upon us. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand anywhere else. For you are a son of Jesus. Blessed is the one who trusts in you. Amen.
Old Testament reading today is from Psalm 27, verses 1 and 4 through 9. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. And then our New Testament reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household, have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptized in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the Christ is, oops, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Here ends our reading. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight. The Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Wanted to share with you a joke I saw on the internet not too long ago. I got kind of a chuckle out of it. It was one of those typical three men on a deserted island things. And one day they see a small lamp float up on shore. And they get all excited thinking maybe this is one of those lamps it's got a genie in it that grants wishes. So they rub the lamp. Sure enough, out pops a genie. And he says, I'll give you three wishes. Three men, three wishes, one apiece. First guy says, you know, I'm sick of eating bananas and coconut. I want to eat some fine French food. So poof. Next thing he knows, he's standing underneath the Eiffel Tower. Second guy says, I always wanted to be a movie star. I always wanted to be an actor. Well, poof, he finds himself in Hollywood. Comes to the third guy, last wish, and he says, you know, I miss my friends already. I wish they were back here with me. <laughs> be careful what you wish for. The idea of the genie, oops, is well known in our culture and in cultures throughout the world. It originated in the story of the Arabian Nights, and in the original version, there were two genies and unlimited wishes. But that has since evolved over time to come down to the 
one genie, kind of three wishes that we were talking about. Uh, now there are some rules, as you said, about the wishes. You can't wish for more wishes, and you can't get the genie to kill anybody for you, but other than that, pretty much get whatever you want. I want us to think about this idea of the genie and the wishes in the context of our readings this morning. Uh, with the obvious warning that God is not a genie, he's not Santa, and he's not a vending machine where you put in a prayer, push a button, and get whatever you want. God is not a genie, and wishing is not the same as prayer. But I think there are some similarities. And especially when you think, for example, of our reading in the Old Testament from Psalm 27, and I call your attention to verse 4. One thing have I asked of the Lord. One thing that I will seek after him that I may dwell in his house all the days of my life. This idea of God giving us this one thing sounds kind of genie-like, but actually is in the Bible. You think back to the story of Solomon. Solomon's a young boy, and he's about ready to become the king of Israel upon the death of his father David. So God comes to him in a dream and says, Solomon, whatever you want, one thing, whatever it is you want, Solomon, I'll give it to you. Now think about that for a second. The God of the universe, the God that created everything, comes to you and says, whatever you want. What is it that you want? What would people ask for? Solomon decides to ask for discernment and wisdom, telling the Lord, I am but a young boy. Now I have to lead this great people. So I pray you would give me wisdom and discernment. And God was so pleased with this that he told Solomon, because you have not asked for long life and riches and all those other things, I'm going to give those to you plus the wisdom as well. And Solomon ended up becoming one of the richest, wisest men who ever lived. Well, that seems to settle the discussion then. If we're going to ask for something, we should ask for wisdom. But that was the right thing for Solomon to ask for at that place and at that time. And we also have to remember that Solomon was asking for earthly wisdom. He was asking to be a good judge, a good ruler. And earthly wisdom, as good as it is, has its own problems. Solomon misused the wisdom God gave him. He married hundreds of pagan women who introduced idolatry into the nation and set in motion a chain of events that split the kingdom in two and then ended up destroying both nations. So earthly wisdom is not necessarily the answer, and that's what we see in our New Testament reading. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, and I specifically draw your attention to verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. There are certain people in our world we consider to be wise. They're book smart. They know a lot of stuff. And they think they know a lot of stuff. But they don't know enough to know that they need God. So to them... The cross is just foolishness. Makes no sense to them at all. That's earthly wisdom. Worldly wisdom. They're very smart in a worldly sense. But not where it counts. And even Solomon later in his life, in looking back as an old man, in the book of Ecclesiastes, which is wrote, he wrote, admitted that this chasing after wisdom was vanity. It was meaningless. It was folly. Because here he is at the end of his life. He spent a life dedicated to wisdom, and it didn't really get him where he wanted to go. Earthly 
wisdom as opposed to spiritual wisdom. Well, some people, of course, wouldn't ask for wisdom if they had one thing God would give them. And I think this may apply to a lot of us here. And I think one of the girls said it. You might ask for healing. You might ask to be healed in a physical sense. That's certainly what the ten lepers did when they came to Jesus. As a matter of fact, most of the people who were coming to hear Jesus were not there so much for the message as they were that maybe he would touch them and bring healing. You think about all the people that came to Jesus. The man with the withered arm, the man lowered through the roof of the house, the man born blind, the crippled man who had been crippled for 38 years, the man with the demon-possessed boy. All of them were coming to Jesus for the same reason. I want healing. I want physical healing. The lepers had to keep their distance and shout at Jesus from across the way. Lord, Master, have pity on us. And he did. And that's the amazing thing. Jesus showed incredible compassion and mercy by healing the people he healed. But, because it's an earthly healing, because it's an earthly healing, at some point, all of the people Jesus healed, including the lepers, all of the people he raised from the dead, eventually, one day, got old enough or sick enough and still died. It was a temporary solution. But a lot of people have their minds set upon the idea of physical healing. Others have their minds set on material things, whether that's money or power or whatever. But again, it's an earthly, worldly, temporary fix. Think about the woman at the well, for example. Jesus is trying to tell her about himself as the living water, just as he, in John chapter 6, was trying to teach others about himself as the bread of life. The woman's not thinking along those terms. She's thinking about the water of the well when he starts talking about water. She's like, oh, maybe he's going to make it easier for me to come get water or so I don't have to come as frequently. She's thinking about earthly things, an earthly perspective, and Jesus is trying to tell her about a heavenly perspective. I'm the bread of life. I am the living water. But her mind is so fixed on the here and now, she really can't totally comprehend what he's talking about. So what about you? I'll ask you the same question we asked of the girls. Solomon asked God for wisdom. If you had one thing, what would it be? What would you ask for? And I think all of us can agree that what God is trying to do in our lives is to move us from the earthly and the temporary to the heavenly and the eternal, to shift our perspective away from the here and now to the eternal. In other words, what God wants us to ask for is more of Him. To be more like Him. To be more like His Son, Jesus. We said at the beginning that this idea of wishing is not really praying. But some people take it that way. Some people approach prayer almost like they were asking a genie for wishes. This is what you might call the Santa Claus view of God or the vending machine view. You put a prayer in, punch a button, out pops what you want. So in many ways, some people have a prayer life where they're trying to take their perspective and they're trying to bend God to that perspective. God, I know you will give me what I want if you would just understand my situation. If you just knew... I'm sure you would give me what I'm asking for. 
And what's really going on in prayer and in faith is not us bending God to our will, but God bending us to His will. To try to come to an eternal, heavenly perspective about faith and life rather than an earthly and temporal one. The sign of a growing and mature faith is when you can go to God, bending your will to His, saying, Thy will be done. We pray it every Sunday. But do we really mean it? Thy will be done as long as that will is not too difficult. As long as you're not asking me to do something too hard. Because then, I'm not sure I can follow. I'm not sure I can go along for the ride. In John 14, 14, Jesus says, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That sounds pretty exciting. If you ask for anything in my name, some people start thinking about vacation homes, boats, cars, money, and then all I got to do at the end of my prayer is tack on Jesus' name. God, I want all these things, X, Y, Z, your, your list, and then at the end, oh, and, and in Jesus' name. Well, that's not what's going on. This is misapplied is the root of a lot of the prosperity gospel. God wants you to have all these things. He wants you to be rich. And if you're not, it's because you're not praying hard enough or you don't have enough faith. But the key part of this verse, if you ask anything in my name, that goes back again to bending our will to God's, not getting Him to bend His will to ours. Because when we bend our will to God's will, we will ask for things, not necessarily the things that we want or desire, although that's okay, but we're asking things of God that we know He wants for us. And when we ask in God's will, and when we ask Him, to do things that are in accordance with that will and His will for our lives, then He will give us whatever he, we want. Because we know, He knows, that His will then becomes our will. And God will never, never reject a prayer where you're praying for the will of God to be done in your life. So as you think about it, think about your prayer life. Are you trying to bend God to do what you want Him to do? You want God to be Santa? Or are we praying to bend our will to His so that when we go to God and ask, we know He'll give it to us? Because he, that's what He wants for us. We talked about the idea of the genie. The one genie with the three wishes. And I was sitting there thinking about this, and I thought, where in the world would three wishes come from? And then, all of a sudden, it kind of dawned on me. I thought about Jesus being tempted in the desert. Jesus goes out in the desert. He fasts for 40 days. At the end of that time, he's hungry, he's tired, he's exhausted. And that's when Satan shows up. How many times does Satan tempt Jesus? Three. And what are his temptations? What does he tempt him with? Earthly things. Turn this stone into bread so you can eat. Bow down and worship me. And you'll have all the kingdoms of the world. Throw yourself off and the angels will save you. Satan tempts him with food and power and authority. All earthly things that man would desire. And what does Jesus say in response? Satan, it is written. In other words, what he's saying is, you're tempting me with these earthly things that mean nothing to me. I'm responding to you from a heavenly perspective, because I know that's what God wants for me. Man does not live by bread alone. You are to worship only the Lord your God. So Satan was 
tempting Jesus in the way he tempts all of us. Look at these earthly things I can do for you. God is trying to get us to fix our minds upon the eternal and the heavenly. Not that we ignore the problems we have here. Not that we seem to say that they're insignificant. But as we said last week, seek first the kingdom. And God will give you the rest as well. Because he knows it's what you need. I don't know that God would come to any of us today like he did Solomon and give us that same opportunity. Man, I'd sure like to find out. But if that happened to you, whether God comes to you in a dream or a vision or through the power of the Holy Spirit, what would you answer? One thing. What would it be? I encourage you to think about that. Because I think a lot of people would go back to the earthly and the temporary. And God is trying to get us to set our sights on Him and ask for more of Him in our life. So as you think about that and think about what you would ask for, just keep in mind the words from our Old Testament lesson, the same ones that are on your bulletin cover. This one thing I will seek of the Lord, one thing I will ask of Him, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Amen. Our service continues with our sermon hymn on page 115.
think we could all use a little blooming garb of spring right about now, but we will be patient. Our service continues with our prayer of aspiration to Christ as found on page 123. And we will pray together. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, let me seek you by desiring you, and let me desire you by seeking you. Let me find you by loving you, and in love you in finding you. I confess, Lord, with thanksgiving that you have made me in your image so I can remember you, think of you, and love you. But that image is so worn and blotted out by faults and darkened by the smoke of sin, it cannot do that for which it was made unless you renew and refashion it. Lord, I am not trying to make my way to your height, for my understanding is in no way equal to that. But I do desire to understand a little of your truth, which my heart already believes and loves. I do not seek to understand so that I can believe, but I believe so that I may understand. And what is more, I believe that unless I do believe, I shall not understand. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you again this day, we recognize that everyone here has hurt and sorrow and grief and difficulty locked up in their hearts because we live in a sinful and broken world. It's not selfish to pray for physical healing or to ask those things of you because we know that you love us and want the best for us. And that includes the things of this world. And we do ask for those things, Lord. I ask you to touch every person here to know, as you already know, what they need in life and to provide it for them. But help us also to understand that what we need most of all is you. And while it is fine to ask for healing or material things or wisdom, it is even greater to ask for the things of God, for the eternal and the heavenly, where we aim to store our treasure and where we aim one day to join with you forever. And now we pray the prayer that your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to present our tithes and offerings, uh, a reminder that our special offering this month is for the Zion Hammers. And a special thank you to uh, Marvin and Paul who worked this week to put a new handrail in the women's bathroom. And that project is complete. All of us thank you, the women most especially. And Fred, thank you.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that you are no genie or magic being that grants wishes. We come not seeking money, wealth, or power, but only you. Help us always to seek your presence in our lives, that we may dwell in your house forever. We ask this in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn on page 213. seated. Now where did Lee and Abby get off? I don't know. Well ladies come up here. Now's your chance. <laughs> Sell it good now. Abby Abby and I are selling sweet treats and goodies for Waldron's choir program. Please see Abby or I after church if you want if you are interested. Thank you. Good job. Again, no youth group tonight. Hear the word of the Lord from John chapter 15. If you remain in me, Jesus said, and my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. Amen.